Stephen Conroy, I want you to put your uh, defence hat on here. Australia is about to arm up with $270 billion worth of extra stuff uh, to help uh, well, keep us safe, uh, to take on troubles around the world and to be able to defend ourselves, put uh, frankly. Here's the Prime Minister talking in part about the need for this, uh, this stuff and that part of being a strong country is your ability to defend yourself. We don't seek to entangle or intimidate or silence our neighbours. We respect their sovereignty. We champion it and we expect others to respect ours. Sovereignty means self-respect, freedom to be who we are ourselves, independence, free thinking. We will never surrender this, never, ever. Well, about as close as you got to uh, the C word being China was this. The Indo-Pacific is the epicentre of rising strategic competition. Our region will not only shape our future, Increasingly, though, it is the focus of the dominant global contest of our age. This is the setting for it. The risk of miscalculation and even conflict is heightening. Regional military modernisation is occurring at an unprecedented rate. Capabilities and reach are expanding. Previous assumptions of enduring advantage and technological, technological edge are no longer constants. And even though uh, his opinion is irrelevant, it's important to note because uh, today he is agreeing with this announcement, that being each way elbow, and then, of course, in two days' time when Twitter hates it, he'll disagree with it. So here's the first part of a two-part dance of each way elbows. What I agree is that uh, we need uh, to protect Australia uh, in, in every world, uh, pre, during and after, and uh, that should be a priority in terms of our defence. OK. Uh, so, Stephen, currently $50 billion submarines uh, has been a very big number that could pay for a lot of other things, and I'm not entirely sure that the drawboard has even been completed, let alone uh, the beginnings of building any of these things. I don't doubt the need for us to strengthen up, but I think it's um, going to be an interesting sell to people when $50 billion for the subs, 270 from everything from cyber to potentially, uh, you know, a, a, a defence, missile defence system. Look, my understanding of the figures is much like the figures the government are talking about over the ABC, and I know we're going to get to that, uh, is that, unfortunately, there's no extra money here. What you actually have is a debacle on the hands with the submarines and a debacle on the frigates. Nobody in the defence sector believes that the submarines will be delivered on time, remotely or on budget, and nobody believes the frigates are going to be delivered on time and on budget. So more grandiose announcements, Malcolm Turnbull style, around submarines and uh, technology. Now, yes, we actually do have to have a reassessment for, for the first time in many years because of China's behaviour. Uh, their, their intimidation of their neighbours, their sinking of a Vietnamese fishing vessel in the South China Sea, their overt uh, criticisms of Australia at the moment attempting to suggest that we've massive spying campaign, we're telling lies about them. Uh, they are creating the circumstances to try and distract the world while they basically annex Hong Kong. Hmm. We've seen the laws go into place. We've seen protests in the streets. We've been seeing people no longer... It's not going to be called rendition anymore because they're not reaching into Hong Kong and taking people back to the mainland. They're actually legally now giving themselves the authority to do it. So you feel for the people of Hong Kong. You feel for people in the region who are being intimidated by China's behaviour. And we need to stand firm, stay true to our values uh, and be prepared. But uh, an announcement with a big number like that, frankly, I think is a distraction to hide from the fact the submarine program is a train wreck of monumental proportions and the frigates are going to go close as well. So, the, you know, big distractions... But the substance that's going on underneath it, Paul, is very, very concerning. Yeah, I think the cyber stuff, look, I want to see that as fast as possible. Yeah. I think we have the ability to, to get that done a lot quicker than the other, the hardware stuff. But, Pauline, I mean, the numbers are, are, are eye-watering here. Um, and, you know, we can always easily say, well, if you save $10 billion off this, you could spend it on this, that or the other. But what's your v view about the need to arm up, particularly in preparation against China? Look, I, I won't um, 
denied that we need to uh, boost our military. I have no faith in the Chinese never um, you know, attacking us at, at some point in time. Okay. Yeah. Look, um, you spoke about $50 billion for the submarines. Well, Paul, it's more like $90 billion and it's going to cost another $125 billion on top of that for maintenance programs for wow. them. They are going to be useless. They are diesel electric submarines. We should have gone to, to more like um, probably even half and half and half of them should have been nuclear subs. Um, they've never been tested. It's a new design, the Barracuda. And I have concerns about that as well, as we do with Collins classes. It costs us nothing but, you know, throwing money all the time at it to uh, keep them serviced and in action. Um, as far as when it comes to China, you know what? We're building up the military and it's basically you're looking at China. That's our biggest threat. Correct. Why the hell, you know... <laughs> I've got to really have a big laugh about this in so many ways. We have opened up our country to Chinese coming down here, buying our land, buying our water, buying up our assets and everything like that that we have in Australia. They've virtually taken us over by stealth because the governments have allowed it so they can come in here and buy us up. In a lot of ways, here we are worrying about the warfare and protecting ourselves as a nation against the country that we've opened up to allow them to actually have control and take over. You know, if people think that America is going to come down and help us, think twice about it, because I know the Americans are fed up, because I've got family in America, they're fed up with fighting everyone else's battle around the world and losing their lives. So really, we need to start defending ourselves. How are we going to do it with 25 million people? Um, and we don't have the monies now to actually put in a, a sensible defence force, and this is why the government's trying to appear as look as if we are going to have the defence. But if China really wanted to actually start attacking us, we've got nothing, absolutely nothing, to stop them. And that's why they're just going to take us over quietly, as they are doing, and the government's allowing them to do it, by buying up everything that we've got. Well, what about what we learnt this week, that in Queensland alone, 20% of the water rights owned by foreign companies, uh, foreign-held uh, land ownership is 15,000 hectares right now. Um, 1,000 hectares. Yeah, yep. and, we're, and we're in a scenario where, of course, the uh, foreign-owned or percentage ownerships that are under 50% in Australian companies that own water and own land are, of course, all proxies about something that's foreign-owned as well. Um, I mean, I love that there were people who were surprised by these numbers, but uh, you're not, I'm not, people watching this show aren't, but 20% of the water in I'm Queensland not. is owned by somebody else. Do you know what, Paul, I've got to answer this one too. I'm sorry for cutting anyone else out. But you know that I spoke to some long-term politicians in the Senate there and one said, what are, you worried? what are you worried about? They can't take it with them. They don't get it. They don't understand. And it goes straight from paddock to plate to their country. They don't pay the taxes in this country. And I've been on about this for the last 24 years. And the government said, oh, we're starting to address it. A piddly $125 million in extra taxes from the multinationals. They come down here because they come and invest in here. Oh, they employ people, mm. right? But they don't pay the right amount of taxes. They pay just a minute amount in taxes in Australia. It is... Uh, I get so furious about this. They own more than 25% of the land in Tasmania and the Northern Territory of our prime agricultural land is owned by foreign investors. You're right. And even the water in Australia, 20% of the water and 15% of the water licences is foreign owned. They've sold the port of Darwin to foreign investment. Leasing it is as good as selling it. And we see so much of our assets. And until politicians wake up to themselves, it's not about or they can't take with them. That's got nothing to do with it. Taking the profits out of this country. They're shutting down Australian businesses by producing the food and the goods that they're shipping back to their own country and riding off the, the costs to, to other com companies that they're working with under their own um, logo or their own country. No, I agree completely.